All right, here we are in a lesson three of unit five. Lesson three is about uh, reproduction affects genetic diversity. So in lesson two, two was about how um, when you had the two uh, pea plants, and you know when you had the pea plants, it was mixing together the genetics from the two pea plants. So you had you know those boxes of of four things we had going on. And it had the, uh, you know, like you might recall, it had the, you know, the box, ta-da, and then it had, you know, like the different genes that it might have, like that, you know, and then you could fill out the combo. And But you could see in the inside, it was a combo of the genes. So, uh, yeah, this now we're talking about how that, how reproduction affects diversity of genetics. So here we have a uh, picture of these Cavendish bananas, the trees. It says, banana crops throughout the world are being devastated by a fungal infection commonly known as Panama disease. Panama disease is caused by a soil fungus which enters the plant through the roots. The fungus grows in the plants. It, it just, anyway, it talks about how it, it does that, and then it is, this is what we actually, the type of banana that most people eat on a regular basis. And it says, uh, the Cavendish banana may become extinct if no longer living on Earth because of the widespread disease. Okay, so why might this disease sped, spread quickly in banana plantations? So one thing I said was, that uh, from this picture, all these trees are really close to one another. So I said um, in the plantation, they're all close to one another. And since it says here that the, how does it say that? Um, the fungus grows in the plant's transport tissues. So the, the fungus grows in the tissues of the plant and it's a soil fungus. So it's in the soil. So because all these trees are right next to each other and it's in the soil they're obviously planted all in the same soil and so the fungus will affect all of the trees it's not like it goes from a tree to the next tree so you can get rid of the tree it's in the ground that they're all growing in so it will spread really quickly from one tree to all trees and we're going to continue looking at these trees later on so exploration one is about describing types of reproduction and uh, it says here, reproduction, doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, reproduction, oops, undo that, is the process by organisms generate a new individual of the same species. That's what we're talking about when we talk about reproduction, um, an organism creating another individual of the same species. And so here we have a couple examples of parents and the offspring so the left side is the parents and the right side is its offspring so you have a ray and like the pup the baby ray a moth and the caterpillar the a cactus and the cactus's clones and the green frog and its tadpole and it says compare and contrast the reproduction and growth of these organisms based on the info provided and your knowledge of reproduction so I wrote about uh, one of the things I wrote about when after reading all of this over here, right? Because that's actually what gives you the information to answer the question. Is that the larger organisms like the uh, like the ray? Um, there's a lot like these take longer to grow than say the, the you know the pups will be fully grown in five to eight years versus adult moths emerge after two to three weeks or even the frog after developing for three months. So, you know, these are the, these moths are smaller than, uh, have a really quick, you know, two to three weeks. They're really small. The frogs are a little bit bigger. It's in months. The rays are in years. Those are a lot bigger. And then this actually, the cactus is a little bit different because it talks about how they're clones. So, um, which is interesting. And we're gonna talk more about that. So. There are two main types of uh, reproduction that we are talking about. There is, and it talks about them in these paragraphs, so you can read about them in more detail. But 
they are asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. And the main takeaway from the two is that in asexual reproduction, a single individual is the parent. There is one parent individual. And in sexual reproduction, there are two parents. And so three says, with a partner, select an example of a clone of a biological system. Um, so you could look up different types of uh, plants and look up clone plants that are clones. But lots of examples that you would find is uh, uh, like lots of fungus, like uh, mushrooms and things like that. You also got bacteria. Bacteria, you have a picture right here. And you can see how uh, it's kind of split into two things. So bacteria reproduce asexually by they just copy all of their genetics and kind of duplicate themselves. So they're copying themselves. Um, or even say this cactus right here, how I've talked about up here, how they're different cactuses and it, the, it clones itself. And I said redwood trees. Redwood trees actually clone themselves from their roots. That was my example that I found um, or that I knew about already. And then we have uh, sexual reproduction. And that's when there's two parents. And uh, it says a female elephant typically has one baby after mating and carrying their offspring for 18 to 22 months. Amoebas are microscopic organism, aquatic organisms that can divide every two days. Which organism reproduces through sexual reproduction? It's the elephant. So because the, it's saying that the elephant typically has one baby after mating, and then the amoebas are can divide in half. Right, so the amoebas are just copying themselves, so that is asexual, and the female elephant is mating, so that is sexual. Um, five it says the banana. Uh, this talks about some other stuff about genetic diversity, but we're gonna keep going because it goes into more of it later. So five is banana plants grown for food crops are the result of asexual reproduction. So it's saying that these banana plants up here are. Uh, they're not mating or anything, they're just reproducing asexually. So they're making clones of themselves. And how much, how many parents and how much genetic variation does each banana plant have? So they, they have one parent. Each banana plant has one parent because, you know, you have like, you have like a plant. Ta -da, there's a banana plant. And then it is just copying itself. Right, so then you have another one, right, where it's like uh, you got another plant. But these are this, the second plant is an exact copy of the first. So it, um, there's really no genetic difference between the two. They are clones of one another. So this talks about some organisms can use both type of reproduction. And so that this is true. So in the paragraph, it talks about how there are certain um, organisms that can uh, reproduce both sexually and asexual. And it talks about redwood trees actually can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Um, which type of reproduction might give offspring more of an advantage if a large clearing around the tree became available? So, you know, imagine um, a, a forest, a forestry place comes through, right? And there's, you've got lots of trees, right? So you have like, you know, here's a tree, here's a redwood tree. And then there's for miles around it, maybe not miles, but for like, say hundreds of yards around this tree, there's nothing, there's no other trees. So that's what it means. There's a large clearing around the tree. So your tree you're kind of in the middle of nowhere, you're by yourself. This is when asexual reproduction would be the most beneficial because if you, we're gonna get into this in a second, but um, hopefully you already know how plants reproduce by spreading pollen and seeds and things like that. But if you, um, or at least you know that on a real basic level, but if you're a tree, this is the worst looking tree of all time. So if you're like a tree, right? And you're out in the wilderness, by yourself and there's no other trees around you then there is no way to produce sexually with another tree because there aren't any other trees around so 
that's when being able to produce asexually would be beneficial because there aren't a lot of trees around this tree. That is another, this is a perfect example of like a cactus, right? When you, if you go into the desert, you might find these cactus plants, but there's not tons of them everywhere. They're pretty far apart from one another. And so that is a benefit to cloning yourself is that you don't need other plants that are the same species around. And so here we are identifying asexual and sexual reproduction. So this says uh, female bullheads lay their eggs under small overhangs and pit. The male bullheads fertilize the eggs with their sperm. I mean, already here you have female, male, multiple things. So this is sexual. Um, gel, this jellyfish one says male and female jellyfish release sperm and eggs into the water. So that's definitely sexual. But then it says... Um, it will develop into larva that will grow into a polyp, and the polyp will release portions of its body into the water that will grow into adult je jellyfish. So this, I said, is both because the polyp is then duplicating itself. And so it's got part of it is sexual because it has male and female jellyfish, but then the polyp is releasing portions of its body. So it's kind of like cloning there's clones of this polyp that are growing into adult jellyfish. And then corals can reproduce in a variety of ways. One way is a process uh, to produce a new coral from a fragment. So part of the coral breaks off and then it grows into a new coral. That's definitely asexual. It's just part of the thing is we're just regrowing. Same thing. So how do environmental how does the environment influence different types of reproduction? And so this talks about, in this paragraph, it's talking about uh, if you're in an environment with stable conditions. So here's a picture of, this is probably like a Yellowstone, right? They have these like, uh, they're called vernal pools. They're uh, pools of like acidic water and stuff. Um, and the conditions tend to be really stable because the pools are fed by underwater volcanoes and it's been the same for a really long time. And so in a stable condition, um, it, this paragraph talks about how oftentimes in really stable conditions, asexual is the better way to reproduce. So asexual reproduction is more successful in a stable environment um, because it passes on all of the parents genetic traits that are suited to the environment so because the conditions in this area are so stable right whatever lives here is is a really good at living here right it's lived there for a very long time the area has stayed the same for a very long time so its genetics are really well suited to live right here um, so since it's so well suited passing on all of your genetics is a great idea because uh, you know that it'll work well. Now this talks about uh, changing conditions. Now when conditions are changing, this paragraph talks about how it is better to produce um, sexually when there are changing conditions because with changing conditions, um, you don't necessarily want to pass off to your offspring the same exact genetics that you have because your genetics might not be really great for that environment. So by uh, producing, reproducing sexually, you are mixing up parents' genetics um, and that some of those genetics might mix in a better way than the parents and it will make their offspring more likely to survive and pass off those better genetics. And so it's kind of a way of uh, weeding out bad genetics if you produce uh, sexually. It takes longer, but if the conditions are constantly changing, it kind of helps animals uh, and organisms adapt. So the most likely effects, what, what are the most likely effects of human disturbances on stable environments? Um, so we humans are disturbing a stable environment. So that would definitely change the conditions of the environment from stable to variable. Variable meaning like it changes. 
and it would definitely negatively impact species that reproduce through asexual reproduction. So, you know, going back up to this example, if we built a road, doo -doo 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 -doo, we're building a road, we're building a road next to this pool. All right, this pool's been here for millions of years, and it's got bacteria that uh, produce asexually. They're really well fit into this area. Now all of a sudden we have cars driving down the road right next to the pool, and they got smog. Well, that's problematic because now we have all these organisms who really are not uh, adapted to deal with smog and pollution and cars and the road, and all of a sudden they have to deal with it. And so because they're passing on 100% of the, gen the genetics, it will uh, be harder for them to adapt if they can at all. Um, and so here we have, uh, talks about a Joshua trees. Joshua trees are actually uh, in California quite a bit, and it says decide whether asexual or sexual reproduction would be more beneficial for in the following environments. And these produce, it talks about how these produce uh, both. And actually, like I, I guess I'll go into that because I haven't gone into that. So some things reproduce through both. And so it says Joshua trees reproduce sexually through the pollination of flowers. So Joshua trees have flowers that they can um, uh, reproduce through sexually. We go into the, how that more, works more. Um, and then asexually through vegetative reproduction from roots or branches. So the roots and the branches can actually sprout off into more uh, Joshua trees as well, kind of like making clones of themselves. So it talks about how in colder, windier conditions, um, that might make it harder for pollinators, the bugs and the insects that go to the flowers to survive. And so that would be a case where the trees would be reproducing asexually. But if they are, um, if the trees are in an area where maybe it's not so windy or cold, because a lot of these are in uh, deserts of one kind or another. Um, so if it's not as windy and it's not as cold, just because of where they happen to be growing, then there might be bees and things around that can also help them reproduce uh, sexually through spreading the pollen to the flowers and everything. So here we have a bunch of different environments and whether they produce asexually or sexually. So the save the same average temperature and rainfall for 50 years. So that's a good amount of time. So uh, I said asexual. Uh, rain shadow of a mountain range with similar maximum and minimum temperatures for a century. So over a long period of time, we've got the same weather happening. So asexual. An apex predator has been hunted to near extinction. Um, I said that would, um, in this environment, sexual would be better because you don't necessarily want uh, this apex predator. You want to be able to adapt to new environments because it's being hunted to extinction. So you want to maybe have a little bit, maybe you want its genetics to be able to um, change a little bit so it can survive in a different environment or something. And then, I mean, here we have pollution is degrading the environment or humans are changing plant and animal life. Both of these are cases where the landscape is changing, so you would uh, it would be more beneficial to reproduce sexually because you are uh, changing the genetics that are getting passed on, which could help the offspring. Um, now it talks about developing hybrids. And a hybrid is, without reading this paragraph, a hybrid is when you can take uh, different types of plants and you uh, grow them together. Um, and they can uh, change colors and things like that. So maybe you mix like a yellow and a red rose and you get purple or, or you get like pinkish roses or something like that. Um, I don't know 100% how people do this, but they you're taking different parts of plants and you're mixing them up and you can get uh, different colors, different leaves, things like that. There's lots of actually, there's actually a number of different ways you can make hybrid plants. This one in particular says a rose farmer needs to grow plants that produce orange flowers in the colder months to meet customer demand. So there's customers that want orange flowers, orange roses in cold months. How can the farmer produce a hybrid that will do this? So maybe it seems like the problem is that there's not enough orange flowers in the colder months. So maybe they don't grow uh, fast enough or they don't grow at all during the cold months. So what you could do is you could take the orange flowers, right? And you could crossbreed them with um, 
roses or that grow better during the winter or um, maybe that grow more often during the winter and then you might get orange roses that are they have the two traits of both plants so they're orange and they grow during the winter and then that could be a way that you would make a hybrid okay so exploration two is about how reproduction actually affects genetic variation so 12 says do you think that the offspring of each organism are genetically identical to the parent or not genetically identical to the parent and now that I'm looking at these things, I um, this is about these organisms, but um, I, I wrote my paragraph more generically, and so I said in sexual reproduction, the offspring is not identical because it's you're mixing the different genes, and I gave the example of you're actually mixing alleles from different genes. That was from the last lesson. And with asexual reproduction, the offspring is a, just a straight up clone of the parent. So the genetics, the genetics are identical. Okay, so here's a picture of um, how genes are inherited in asexual reproduction. So in asexual reproduction, right, you have a parent cell and it just starts duplicating all of its DNA and then it splits off. Once it's made copies of all of its genetics, it just splits into a second one and then this keeps happening. And so this happens pretty quickly, so it helps the individual survive, um, but it also, uh, it also, um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, it, it happens quickly, but in its direct copies. And so here we have the rate of asexual reproduction. Um, and in this chart, you can see how every 52 minutes, right, the number of cells is doubling. So it goes in 52 minutes, it goes from one to two, 50 minutes later we have four, 52 minutes later we have eight, and 16, and 32, 64, then it, would be a, then it would be 128, then it would be 256, then another 50 minutes would be 500. So this right here is actually why, um, you know, a lot of times when you get sick, you get sick pretty quick because bacteria can take over. Like if you've ever had strep throat, it, it happens real quick because the that bacteria reproduces so fast that you get it and then you know maybe eight hours later you're feeling really sick because you know already here in um, just a couple hours we went from one cell to 60 cells and then there would be you know a hundred after that and then 250 more minutes later so it's really quick and this the independent variable is time because time is just going along and the dependent variable is the number of cells because the number of cells that we have depends on how many minutes we're letting these cells reproduce and this is the genetic the generation time of most bacteria that means how long it takes for a generation of bacteria is usually in minutes what advantage is this so with bacteria um bacteria uh, the advantage is that because bacteria reproduce so quickly, if they ever get someplace that they can actually grow and reproduce, they do it really, really quick and they can take over. Um, and then 16 says, if they reproduce so fast, why don't they take over the world? Well, the reason that they can't end up taking over the world is because, for one, there's other bacteria that they have to compete with, um, but they also have... Um, because they have the, they're reproducing right and there's lots of these bacteria but they all have the same exact genet genetics so if something comes along that will kill them off it will kill essentially all of them off because they all have the same exact genetics so this is how uh dna is inherited in sexual reproduction so i uh, typically we describe uh that we have the female and the male and so you can see how these like circles represent the genes of the female on the squares represent the genes of the male. And so anytime they uh, reproduce, it is a mix of the genes that get passed to the offspring. So their genes aren't getting directly copied. It's a co combination of them. And so here it says which combinations could be possible. And what you really want to look for is A and C can't be possible because A is all circles and c is all the squares so these are direct copies of the female on the male but these two are random mixes of the circle genes and the square genes 
um, equally, and so these would be possible. So the advantage of genetic variation, uh, this talks about um, how genetic variation is an advantage because as organisms continue to reproduce, right, um, traits that are beneficial to the organisms will help them to be more likely to survive their environment. And so because they're more likely to survive their environment, um, then they will, in general, over really long periods of time, reproduce more often or more successfully. And so the, the better traits will get passed on from generation to generation. This is a lab we are skipping. Okay, and then it has genetic variation can result in differences in many traits, including disease to disease, resistance to diseases. How could genetic variation of the banana plants, oh, describe the genetic variation of the banana plants grown for food? How do you think that this level of variation relates to the threat of the pa Panama disease and banana crops? So if you don't remember, I'm not going to scroll all the way back up, but it said that they were pretty likely to become extinct. And that's because in the, the previous evidence notebook, the second one, it said that they, they clone themselves. They reproduce asexually. So what you have is you have this fungus, this uh, disease that's in the soil that all of these trees are growing in. But all of these trees have the same exact genetics because they're all copies. And because they're just copying, the trees are just essentially copying themselves and not they're not producing uh, sexually so they're not mixing up their genes they're all going to be susceptible to this fungus or this bacteria or whatever it is that's in the, the disease that's in the ground that will kill them off so they're just going to keep getting killed off if they produced sexually then there might be a tree that all of a sudden um, gets a certain combination of genes from its parents that makes it resistant to the the disease in the soil. Then if that happened, then that tree wouldn't get killed off, right? Because it's resistant. So that tree could then reproduce with other trees and make more trees that are resistant to the disease. And that would help those trees uh, to survive. But they don't actually reproduce that way. They're just cloning themselves. So that's why a lot of uh, scientists are thinking that eventually they'll probably just go extinct because they don't have any way to cope with the disease. And then this is a, a Venn diagram. So asexual reproduction is one parent, it's faster. There's lots of offspring in general, because it's faster. Sexual is two parents, it's slower. There is genetic variation, and there's typically fewer offspring this way, um, but they both produce offspring. And then this just says, like, compare and contrast the differences. And I've said that a lot, but in general, if things are the same or you're trying to reproduce really quickly, like the environment is the same, I mean, then a sexual reproduction is just fine because you can have lots of offspring and you're in an environment where uh, they'll survive and that's great. Um, but if you are in a changing environment or um, maybe you're, you have predators or something like that, or you need to be changing a little bit, then sexual reproduction is better because even though it's slower, it will pass on genetic variation from uh, to, off, to the offspring, and that can help them in the future. So there you go. That is uh, genetics through reproduction, asexual and sexual reproduction.